videos we continue the discussion of orthogonal problems and we're going to explore some different ideas to solve them. Um, in general there are lots of ideas in this area and we're going to explore some of them here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the very important concept of KD trees. Again this is a very familiar problem. We have a set of endpoints in the plane and we want to store them in a data structure such that given a query rectangle which is with sides parallel to the axes we can find a set of points inside this query. The data structure we want to build not only can find the set of points inside, but it can also find the number of points inside, so you know, can count how many points are inside. The idea that we have is kind of like generalizing a binary search tree to two dimension. One way to look at a binary search tree is to think of it as having a set of one dimensional points on the unit line, and then split it in half with n over two to the left and n over two to the right, and then you recurse. You split in two to so get n over four, n over four, and so on. Okay? And you continue this until you end up with a constant number of points. We want to do the same thing in 2D. For example, split the points in half into the left and the right. But the major difference that we want to do here is to uh, switch the axis. So after splitting based on x-coordinate, the next split I want it to be based on y-coordinate. Um, but I want to keep this idea that at each split that I do, I roughly half the number of points. Okay, so now roughly there's a quarter of the points in each one of these uh, quadrants left. And so on. We continue until essentially every region has only a constant number of points, say at one point. Okay, and then we're done. So this brings us to this build the data structure that we call a KD tree. A su the pseudocode will roughly look something like this. Um, if you have only one point left, then we return a leaf, leaf node representing that one point. Otherwise, we do a different division based whether we have an odd depth or even depth. So if the depth of the recursion is even, then we partition the input points in, into two equal uh, sets using a vertical line. If the depth of the recursion is odd, then we use a horizontal line. And then we recurse on the, the left set and the right set by with uh, one extra depth. Okay, so after recursing on this, we have a uh, KD tree, and the uh, on the first point set, we make it the left child of the P, uh, of the of the current node, and then we make the P two the right child. Okay, so the pseudocode should be more or less clear what's happening, and uh, so essentially we get a tree like this. So the main point here is that, of course, this since every point is only stored at some at one leaf, and uh, we easily get uh, a structure that is exactly a tree. Therefore, it has linear size. The time that it takes to build a KD tree is also going to be n log n because every single step is linear time. Um, we can do this part in a step in linear time, and then we have a recursion and two problems of half the size, so if you want to write a recursion, that's going to be t of n equals 2 times t of n half uh, plus o of n, which is the classic recursion that's also in log n. So the pre present time is the same as a normal binary search tree. And uh, that, that's basically it when it comes to uh, building the KD tree. Sometimes you could store additional information inside these uh, nodes. So, for example, if you want to store, if you want to your data structure to count the number of points inside the query rectangle, you would store the number of uh, points inside the subtree of, of any internal node, and so on. So, it is when you want to solve specific problems, you might modify this data structure slightly. Okay? But that's basically the main idea of building KD trees. In the next videos, we're going to look at an analysis of KD3 in particular, we're going to analyze the query time of the state structure.